my name is Steve Weber, and we're here at Callahan's Beach. Callahan's Beach borders the most western part of the Sunken Meadow State Park. Sunken Meadow State Park was formed in 1928. There was approximately 550 acres at the time, and over the years, more and more land has been added to the complex. Here at Callahan's, much of this land was brought into the public domain in the early 1950s. There were several houses on this property here, and those houses were claimed under the principles of eminent domain. I was speaking to a friend of mine, Bobby Lyons, down at Shanahan's, and he said he remembered when he was a kid that they would come down here, him and his father, they'd walk along this bluff over here, this overhang over the Long Island Sound, and uh, they would walk and they would see the remnants of the houses. So that's what we're, what we're here today. We think the evidence is pretty strong that there should be some sort of houses or ruins in this area. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a walk over there and uh, see what we discovered. Okay, so now we've walked about 100 yards uh, since the uh, parking lot down in Callahan's. And if you take a look over here, it looks like there's some sort of a road or a trail. So we're going to take a walk down there and see if uh, uh, on this old road, if there's some houses or any evidence of it. So let's take a look. Okay, so while walking down the trail, this is what, what we found. It looks like these are some steps. It looks like this is a wall that's built, and this looks like some steps. It doesn't look like this is a, uh, a trail or some improvement. It looks like this is the front to a house, and it looks like this is a road that we're walking along. So uh, let's see if we can uh, find out what's going on here. Okay, so now we've looked around this area trying to find some type of foundation. We haven't found anything yet, but what we're doing is we're finding a lot of these domesticated trees, plants and stuff which aren't native to this region but appear to be planted here. And what that probably is, is the homeowners probably planted these at one time and perhaps they filled in the foundation and we can't locate it, or maybe we're just not looking hard enough. So we're going to look a little bit more and see what else we can come up with. Okay, so now we found this big hole. This looks like it could be the remains of a foundation. And so we're looking around to find some evidence uh, of bricks or stones or something that would indicate that this, this is where one of the houses were. And then I found we have this poured concrete. There are little hunks of concrete all around in this area over here, which may indicate that there was a home here. There's no way out in the middle of this wilderness here why there would be poured concrete. And there's not like a trail where a truck could have backed up and like illegally dumped it. And there are no piles of concrete in this area. So uh, this is a pretty good evidence that, um, that there might be additional, uh, additional artifacts in this area, perhaps point us in the right direction. Let's look around some more. Okay, so now we're starting to see a lot more concrete in this area that looks like poured concrete, stuff you wouldn't find in the middle of the woods. So why don't you follow me and let's walk down here. I see a little bit more. This looks like a curb. This is actually a curb. So, so um, I see there's another grassy area over here. Let's take a look down here. Okay, here's another example. These are all, looks like lilies that are planted in this area. A lot of times when there were houses, you'd plant like one or two lilies, you know, in your garden. And if you leave it alone for 50 years, which it is now, this is what you get, a big field of lilies. We're going to come back here in the springtime and in the summertime when these blooming a little bit more. And to see, I bet this is going to be a beautiful, beautiful spot. You know, it's strange when you leave things back to nature, nature takes over and you'll be surprised at some of the creations it makes. These, I've seen these types of fence posts before. These all borderline like the Vanderbilt estate. They're these huge columns and these <laughs> still rock solid now. If you take a look down here, you see this fence goes for quite a distance and it looks quite old. It looks like it can be old enough to be one of the fences over 50 years old that borderline some of the estates that were in this area. And I could see why the people would have objected so much to their houses being taken over by eminent domain because that, look at them, 
These are these big, beautiful houses that must have been behind these huge fences. You don't have a little bungalow behind the fence, a fence like this, right? So uh, we're getting closer, so let's look some more. Okay, outside this gate over here, we now discovered this well. It looks like of old construction, main, mainly made out of bricks and such. And you can see at some point people tried to put up cones to prevent people from falling in here. But, uh, yep, this is, this is more of a, uh, an indication that there were homes here. Because in this area, you didn't have public water. It's not like we live now where you just hook up your, your water to the town water flow and you know, you're ready to uh, cook and clean and do all the things you would expect from modern living. You actually had to dig a well and get well water and these hills are certainly filled with plenty of water and so this is just an example of uh, how they were able to have houses here. Okay, so now we, we found like this this pump, this is some sort of a pump or a water spigot over here. Now it has some writing on it. I want to try to see what it says. It looks like M I D D Middle Middletown. Middletown. What does it say? Middletown, Connecticut, USA. So it looks like Middletown, comma. C-O-N-N-U-S-A. So that's probably where this, this was built because Connecticut is right across, the, uh, right across the sound there. And when setting up this community, you would think that they would buy things on Long Island. But really, the closest point is Connecticut because you just bring a boat across the sound. So I bet you they received a lot of their goods and services from Connecticut. And here's a little bit of evidence to, to lead us to that conclusion. Oh, baby, let me be your salty dog. I don't want to be your man at all, baby. I want to be your salty dog. I said, baby, let me be your salty dog. I don't want to be your man at all, baby. I want to be your salty dog. I said one, two, three, four, five, six, please don't leave me in this fix, baby. I wanna be your salty dog. Oh baby, let me be your salty dog. I don't wanna be your man at all, baby. I wanna be your salty dog. Well, a little fish, big fish swimming in the water. Come back, man, give my quarter. Baby, I want to be your salty dog. Oh, baby, let me be your salty dog. Don't be your man at all, baby. I want to be your salty dog. Yes, scared as I ever was in my life, Uncle Bud liked to call me kissing his wife. Yeah, I wanna be your salty dog. Oh, baby, let me be your salty dog. Don't wanna be your man at all, baby. I wanna be your salty dog. Salty dog. Salty dog. Salty dog. Salty dog. Baby, I wanna be your salty dog. Callahan's Beach. It's a beautiful day and I think we're at the end of our trip here so I think it's time for lunch and I know the kids are real happy about that part. All right so for now this is Steve Weber from the Kings Park Heritage Museum in uh, on Callahan's Beach on Long Island and uh, bye for now. <laughs>